Hey, what's going on, everybody? Matt Holmes here with BodySynergyTraining.com and another badass, info-filled, dropping bombs of knowledge for you guys interview. Uh, got my buddy, uh, Joe Emont, on here. He and I have known each other for, fuck, I don't know how long have we known each other for? We used to work at Equinox together and both decided it was better to do our own thing, and now we're kind of off doing stuff all over. Um, he's into all kinds of crazy cool stuff, lots of knowledge, always teaching me different things because we're both, we like lifting, training, get along really well, but we both kind of look in different areas. He does stuff that I've never even heard of before, so it's always great to connect and hear some of the stuff he does, and I'm not even going to try to explain it because I'll totally mess it up, so I'm just going to kind of let him explain some of the specialties that he does for you guys. All right. Yeah. What's up, dude? Um, yeah, I think it's been like seven, more than seven years since yeah, like we, been a while. we worked together. It's been a long time, man. And uh, and you've been doing all this crazy stuff too. <clears throat> so I haven't seen a whole lot of you lately. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, man. Like, I mean, like as a kid, I've always been involved in sports. So I was kind of like, I was kind of lucky to kind of have a lot of movement patterns together at a very early age. And it, you know, as I got more and more into training, it became really apparent to me that, that the typical exercises that you want to see people do in order to get them in shape, they can't really do. They're just not capable. And I was always like into the whole bodybuilding culture. You know, I was always reading bodybuilding magazines when I was a kid, like growing up and I was like, Oh man, I want bigger arms. I want all this stuff. You know, I want to look ripped and huge and stuff. But you know, I started getting into training and I'm just like, all right, it's pretty simple. You just got to squat and lunge and all these things are really effective for you. And most people can't do any of that stuff, you know? So what that ended up doing was, um, it put me on this search for how do I get people flexible? How do I get people mobile? How do I get people strong and all strength, you know, all ranges of motion. And, um, you know, the traditional stretching, the traditional mobility stuff. Like, you know, I had some success with that, but it ended up turning me into the guy who got really good at corrective exercise. And so I started getting not necessarily the people that I wanted, which were like the athletes and the bodybuilders and the guys that wanted to really improve their physique. But I started getting the people that were injured, that had knee replacements, that had like laminectomies in their cervical spine, that had like dual shoulder replacements, had nerve damage, you know? And so I ended up becoming the trainer that, you know, other trainers would kind of send their like debris, you know, they'd be like, I can't work with this guy. Here you go. You know? And, um, which I mean was good for my business, you know, and it felt really good to help a lot of other people. Um, but it wasn't exactly the, the type of like clientele that I wanted to be working with. So, you know, so anyway, so along, along my, um, journey, you know, I, I became like a flexibility specialist. Um, I was learning a lot of corrective exercise stuff through like NASM and stuff. And, you know, I just read everything I could get my hands on rehab and stuff like that. But it kind of led me to this thing called muscle activation technique. And muscle activation technique was really fascinating to me because, um, you know, Greg Roscoff is the guy that originated muscle activation technique. And I started listening to a lot of his lectures. And one of his things was that, lack of strength, um, that weaknesses and inhibition in the body are actually what caused the tightnesses in the first place. And what I was noticing was that, you know, stretching and all these mobility drills got me some semblance of success. But the thing is, you know, how many times do you hear when somebody comes in after the last week of training and you stretched out their hamstrings and their hip flexors and you stretched out, you know, their lats and all these typical muscles that are tight, they come back and they're all tight again, you know? Um, so that's kind of what led me into muscle activation technique. And so, um, it became this kind of like holistic, all total body approach. And what we do is we get muscles that we do a lot of muscle testing. I do a lot of, um, um, we basically test for inhibited muscles that aren't firing properly. And and when we get them activated, it actually changes the, the way that the system functions as a whole. So what that means is that if somebody has a shoulder problem, I can work on their foot, you know, or I can work on their neck or I can work on their back or their hip or something. And then we actually start affecting the system, um, in kind of a more complete way. So that's, so that's one of the things that I got really, really into. 
Um, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff. Tell me if I'm rambling right now. No, no, no. <laughs> that's totally cool. Cause I, I, you know, that's, it's a good one. Like I said, there's so many things. It's like, I, it's, I know I would have skipped over something or whatever, you know, I know you're doing that and you've done really well with it. And like I said, helped a lot of people. And then I know um, we'll touch on what we were talking about before where you're, you know, the new thing you're learning, but I know you're uh, a big fan of uh, Hulkin and have done a lot of his stuff. Kind of what are some of the things you've learned from him and that have really made a impact for the clients that you've worked with? Cause I know that stuff is just mind blowing with all the research and science that he does within that. Yeah, that stuff's incredible, man. Like during the time, like that was around 2007, I started digging into like MAT and I started actually like, uh, you know, the idea that I could travel out of town to go and learn something like that was kind of foreign to me. I, I was kind of living in this like Los Angeles bubble where I thought like, oh, everything good comes to LA. You know, I was treating it like it was like the entertainment industry, right? Like if I want to see Tool, like I can wait. They'll come to LA. You don't have to fly to like New York to see it in Tool. You know, they'll come. So it was the same thing. You know, I, I assumed that that was the case with the fitness industry and that's not the case at all. <clears throat> like LA is like the dearth of like, you know, fitness, serious fitness education. So so anyway, so I started flying to Denver to go and learn MAT. But at the same time, I had an opportunity to fly to Arizona to learn uh, this thing called biosignature, which was basically Charles Poliquin came up with this whole system of measuring 12 uh, skin fold sites on the body. And from that, you can get an idea of, of what somebody's hormonal makeup might look like without necessarily having to run blood tests. And, um, you know, blood tests, you know, even though they're very specific, they have their limitations in that sometimes the feedback that you get from the body directly is going to be more um, accurate, more specific than the tests that you get back from a lab, you know, not to say that lab tests are not important, you know, those are important too. But <clears throat> it was really revolutionary because it kind of allows you to suggest supplements, diet, um, you know, uh, lifestyle recommendations that will help to balance out that person's unique hormonal profile. And that kind of took me down this pathway of investigating more functional medicine type stuff. So I started to just go to as many conferences as possible. Um, there's a lot of companies out there like Metagenics, um, Designs for Health, um, Zymogen, you know, these different companies that make these doctors only brands of um, supplements. And they also do like uh, seminars and events and you know and then there's a lot of doctors in that field so I've gone and just I've you know flown to like you know at the ends of the earth to like to find these people and just learn as much as humanly possible on it and so and I but I have to credit you know Charles Poliquin for kind of starting me on that whole journey um, because you know I got into it kind of with that same interest that I had from before which was I want to work with bodybuilders and physique competitors and I want to like I want to figure out the best, most efficient way of getting them lean fast. And I figured if I could kind of add this kind of hormonal aspect to it, that it would really kind of accelerate my results in a really a good way. So, <clears throat> so that's been something I've been doing since like 2007. And man, my, you know, my knowledge is always progressing on that. And, and I mean, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. Um, and oh, you wanted to know what kind of results I was getting with people. Yeah, yeah, because I know you said like now, you know, we'll touch some more on like the bodybuilding and bikini stuff because I know you've kind of really kind of, you're tapping into that now. But for some of the people that don't really know about some of this biosignature stuff and the hormonals, like what are kind of some of the differences that you see within the people and that you make those specific changes where there's someone that could have been going to a tr all these different trainers and they saw some okay results because everyone obviously is going to get some decent results if you're doing things correctly or even people do shit totally fucked up and still get people results but with what you do like what's some of the things that if you've done specific to someone or you know other people multiples and it just kind of blew past that barrier that they were stuck at Fucking 
piece of shit internet. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's still recording. Okay, um, yeah. I see the little recording thing. So. That's recording, so whatever. Uh, we're kind of having some internet issues in there. Uh, I apologize to everybody. I need to get a new router. But uh, 21st century. Still says, still says recording, so uh, let's just cross <laughs> our fingers that it actually is. Um, so now I don't even know if I got what I was saying. Um, what I, sort of, I'll kind of kind repeat of, it anyway. Yeah. Uh, if it does, you guys get to hear my question twice. Um, I was kind of saying like, what are some of the things that are more specific to that, that you've done with people that kind of blew them past the barriers that they were hitting with other people that, you know, they might've been getting mediocre results that everyone's going to get, but that real specific piece to their genetic and hormonal makeup that really got them the results and past where they were and kind of where they were stuck at. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you something, man. Um, you know, it used to be a lot easier to make progress, like probably back in the eighties. Okay. Um, it was pretty simple. I mean, you had guys like, uh, uh, you know, all those aerobics people like, uh, what's her name? Jane Fonda, all that, you know, whatever, just jumping around, burning energy. So basically it was very, it was like condensed into this like really simple energy formula, like energy in, energy out, just eat less food, you know, and then, um, and then work out more and, and you get results. Right. And it's pretty simple. <clears throat> but nowadays the thing is we have so many more challenges with, uh, with regards to our metabolisms. And I think, um, I think calories in, calories out is, you know, it's, it's, it's a model that's there, but I think it's outdated. And so, you know, there's a lot of people nowadays with all the stress and all of the, you know, all the toxicity out there with, you know, all these environmental influences that we have now. Um, you know, I mean, there's so, so many things that are affecting our metabolisms that it's almost like, like we need to heal the metabolism before we can actually like, work with that simplistic model of calories in calories out. So there's, there'll be a lot of people that'll be trying these kind of traditional diet models and they'll be doing a lot of like cardio and, and uh, you know, trying to burn off energy. And the thing is what they really need is to heal their metabolism first. Um, so just bring in their levels up of really basic nutrients like vitamin D3 or like magnesium and zinc, I mean, those are three major, major nutrients that everybody is so deficient in. And the thing is, those are going to impact cell communication. It's going to affect the ability to absorb and utilize minerals, build bone, build your immune system, um, neurotransmitter support, right? Uh, testosterone, um, basically keeping estrogen under control so that you can be anabolic, enhancing detoxification so you can get rid of all these like other things that are slowing down things like your thyroid, your metabolism. And so even addressing like really simple things like that puts the person into a much better state to be able to eat a healthy diet and then, and then start losing body fat. So, I mean, those are really like simple things that I'll do. Um, but, but it took, you know, it took kind of this approach from functional medicine to get to the point where like we realize that supplementation really does do a lot of stuff for us, especially now that our food is so depleted and there's no real nutrients in our food. Even our organic food is just not as nutrient rich as it's supposed to be. And so a lot of people will say like, we'll get all your nutrients from your diet. But now I tell people that's not possible anymore. It's a nice thought, you yeah. know, it's a really nice thought. Um, but essentially what I've seen, and I come from a very like Western medicine family. Okay. So, you know, growing up, I was always like herbs. I don't know about that stuff. Acupuncture. I don't know about that stuff. You know, you're not going to make any changes like, you know, taking a bunch of supplements. Like really, if you want to change something, if you got high cholesterol, you got to take a, you know, Lipitor or statin or something like that. Um, and so I grew up with this very like rigid mentality, but what I started seeing as I started trying some of these things out initially was, you know, people with subclinical symptoms that they didn't even count on like, uh, addressing, <clears throat> like they just kind of took it for granted, like anxiety or insomnia or migraine headaches or energy levels when they wake up or dips of energy throughout the day or, you know, uh, joint pain, things like that. Like all these things were inadvertently changing 
for my clients. And they would say, hey, Joey, I don't feel anxiety anymore. I actually can focus at work. When I wake up in the morning, I feel refreshed. Before I go to bed, like I used to stay up all night thinking about like all the things that were bothering me throughout the day. And now I can just put my head on the pillow and go to sleep. Um, you know, I used to wake up two, three times a night. Uh, and, uh, and now I sleep straight eight hours. Um, and it's all these things kind of in the background that we all kind of take for granted. And the thing is like, how important are all those things, you know, like once you get all that stuff going on, it's like, it's like now you can really start living. And so I kind of see it as we're bringing things back to where they were supposed to be. And now we can get results with our traditional kind of, you know, diet, energy in, energy out. Because before all that shit wasn't working, <clears throat> you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And it's kind of good that you, you know, you mentioned some of the points in there with, uh, you know, the, the nutrient, the, the dense density of quality really of the food these days, even like you said, eating organic yeah, you're going to get more than just traditional mass produced store bought shit, but it's just the quality still is not there. It's just changed. Like they've done studies, they've shown it with regular store bought and organic. It's just the nutrients aren't there that they were 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And these, you know, that's why I love some of these supplements out there that have these really good organic, you know, these superfood greens, whatever powders that are out there, those make a huge difference along with all these other supplements, you know, that you can go on and on and you can overcomplicate. But I think there's a lot of base stuff that with all my clients or anybody, I say, hey, you know, make sure you're taking, you know, really high EPA, DHA, really a good multivitamin mineral source, and then also a really good superfoods powder. Yeah, all that stuff, man, it's it's so necessary. I mean, I would say if there's like five supplements that I would say that everybody needs to enhance their performance, I would say number one would be like digestive enzymes because we are all enzyme deficient. Uh, the food that we eat just does not have the enzymes in it to replenish our own, and so we just become deficient over years. And... Um, we can't break down all of our macronutrients properly anymore. So that's huge. I mean, if you can't do that from the get go, um, you know, you, I mean, your digestive system is everything you absorb and then you excrete waste. So if you can't absorb, then you may not be getting the calories you think you're getting, you know? So, yeah. <clears throat> so as far as gaining strength, huge, there's huge implications and you know, and we we jump so fast to like, Oh, I should be taking creatine. I should be taking this. And what about, what about HMB or what about the, you know, all these like things, but it's like, get your digestion right. Number one. Number two, I would say fish oil is huge because just because of the amount of adulterated oils that we get into in our diet and also the lack of omega threes creates an imbalance between omega three and sixes. So fish oil would be like number two. Magnesium would be number three. I believe magnesium is the most abundant mineral on the planet Earth, and I think it's the second most abundant in our bodies, and it's necessary for life. So basically what ends up happening is that when you plant plants in soil, and then you plant the plants again in the same soil, and then you plant it again, and you replant, and you keep planting, the first mineral to be depleted is magnesium. So, <clears throat> you know, people always ask me, like, well, what, what types of foods can I eat that has ma ma uh, magnesium naturally in it? And, you know, I'd love to tell them that avocados naturally have a lot of magnesium or chocolate has a lot of magnesium, you know, but the truth is no foods really have the magnesium they're supposed to have anymore because of the soil depletion. I think, I think Dr. Bob Rakowski said something like, um, healthy plants need like 20, is it, is it like 23 or 27 different nutrients in order to grow? And we basically are replenishing only three of them okay so that's the kind of food that we're getting nowadays so i'd say magnesium and literally you cannot take enough magnesium you can't you know you just can't um what's the other one 
I would say vitamin D3. Okay. Um, we naturally are supposed to be producing vitamin D3 like when we go out into the sun. But basically, the hours where we can get the sunlight necessary to produce the vitamin D3 would be in such a short window of time, like between, um, I think, like noon and two. Okay. And, you know, it depends on also like your latitude um, on the planet. Uh, so basically, the closer to the equator you are, the more likely you are to, to be like sufficient with your vitamin D. But the further you are to like the poles, the more likely you are to be deficient. And also the darker your skin, the longer it takes you to produce vitamin D3 from the sun. So if you are light skinned, you chances are have better D3, but even they're deficient. But if you're very dark skinned, then you absolutely 100% need to be taking a lot of vitamin D3. Um, for immune health, for, um, you know, mineral absorption, uh, for bone density. <clears throat> so that's another one. And then I think you mentioned it just before was the greens. I'm really a big believer in the greens because we already don't get enough vegetables in our diet. And it's all about those micronutrients that almost like we don't even, we don't even have an understanding of the specific nutrients that are in those things. I mean, you know, science hasn't even defined all of the different like polyphenols and like carotenoids and stuff that you can get. So when you have a really concentrated greens powder, each tablespoon is about a servings of vegetables. And if you can just pound that, I mean, you're just going to be, you're going to have all the antioxidants that you need. Um, it's a very alkalinizing thing for the system. Okay. And basically, Enzymes need to be in a very narrow pH in order to function properly. And those enzymes affect hormonal function. They affect detoxification. Um, they also have a high portion of nitrates in them. And nitrates in your body break down to nitric oxide, okay, which expands blood vessels and helps blood flow. So if you're talking about getting a really good pump during a workout, making sure you make the best of it, of your workouts every single day, you know, um, those greens in large amounts will help you there even more so than an arginine supplement. And the reason why is because arginine need, you need to take that amino acid, you need to build up nitric oxide, which is an anabolic process, which is more costly than a catabolic process, which would be the nitric or the nitrates being broken down into nitric oxide. So it's a simpler, less energy efficient or less energy uh, dependent process to uh, get nitric oxide from greens. It alkalinizes the system, which helps to reduce cortisol and catabolism post-workout. You're getting just a flood of antioxidants. Um, yeah, I mean, so those would be the five, <clears throat> right? I think, I mean, would just, by and far, just blow anything else out of the water. And um, even before you talk about stuff like creatine or any of these other like performance enhancing, you know, the stuff that says like super mega 2000 or, you know, all the stuff that sounds good. All the, all the, all the marketing <laughs> out there with some of those, then what, um, what's kind of the, we'll start with the, with the, with B3. What's, what's kind of the average amount people should be taking like a base, uh, that they should have every day that they're taking of that. Of greens. Uh, no, the, the B vitamin. Oh, B vitamins. You know, gosh, that depends on the person. I mean, a good B complex will have um, active form B vitamins. Mm -hmm. So basically, like, B vitamins have to go through a conversion process in your body in order for them to become active. And so, like, B6... Um, uh, it's uh, peroxidine HCL, right? You'll see a different version of B6 called P5P or peroxidal 5-phosphate, and that's the active form in the body. And so you actually need less of that in order for it to be effective, and you're kind of taking away one of the, um, one of the active conversion steps in order for that supplement to work. The same thing for folic acid. So folic acid has a, a very active form called 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. Um, and so... The difference between like a crappy B, B complex and like a good one is that you'll start to see these active form B complex vitamins in there. 
And if you found one that is that has the majority of these active forms, so with, for instance, B6, P5P, with B9, you want to see the 5-MTHF, and then with uh, B12, you want to see the methyl cobalamin form. And if you saw those three ingredients on a B complex that has like the rest of the B complexes, like B1, B2, B3, right? It'll have a little bit of everything. Um, you can be pretty sure that you're getting a good one. And then that, you know, it goes anywhere from like just a basic two to four caps per day to, I mean, four, eight caps, like... Twice a day. It depends on it depends on what the person is dealing with. Yeah. You know? um, but I don't hesitate to go high dose on B complex, and the reason why is that, you know, they're all water soluble. Um, I mean, there's a certain couple of cases that maybe I wouldn't go like super high, but um, that would only be temporary before I would bring it up. Um, like for instance, if somebody's like very inflamed, you know, then I probably would watch it because you don't want to upregulate any of these processes while you're trying to heal their system. Okay, perfect. And then I know a lot of people typically they'll ask me and I'm sure you get all the time. They're like, Oh yeah. You know, I take a, an omega free where they don't realize looking at the back of the bottles of most of them are super low. You know, it's a proprietary complex and you look at it and you're like, Oh, well, you know, two capsules is not even a full grant. You know, it's, it's super, super small. And they're like, yeah, I take two a day. And you're like, well, you should be taking probably five times the amount of that because for one, it's low. And, you know, when studies show that the long giant list of benefits that you get from the, the omegas and the high EPA and DHA is actually a lot more than what the recommended daily dose is. And then the same thing too, it's like if you're being, the more active you are and the more you're using all these nutrients, you know, macros and micronutrients, all these vitamins there, you, your body's utilizing it and you need to take more. So I tell people, I'm like, Hey, you know what? Okay. How much are you taking? Well, it's typically, they need to be taking about four or five times more than what the actual bottle says of, Oh, take two once a day. It's like, no, you should be taking three to four, three times a day, you know, with your meals. Yeah. Yeah, and I always tell people that too, especially like for instance with multivitamins, that's the most notorious one because, you know, there'll they'll be these multivitamins on the shelf and they'll be like, they'll say like one a day, you know, and everybody's looking for like the easy answer. And so you look on the back and somebody that doesn't really know will see like 100%, like all the way across down the bottom, you know, down the label and they'll be like, oh, it has 100% of vitamin A, it has 100% of a B comp, 100%, of, oh, this one has 3,000% of that, you know, it's like, oh my God, you know. Um, <clears throat> but the thing is like, you know, you always get what you pay for when it comes to supplements. And so, you know, for instance, like vitamin E is not vitamin E. Vitamin E is like eight different fractions of different, um, to cofferols and topotrienols, you know? So if you don't know that, you're going to just see vitamin E on there. You'd be like, oh, okay, that, there it is, 100%. You know, and so there's a lot of, like, little nuances that you kind of have to know about before you pick, like, a good, like, multi. And a lot of the better molecules, the you know, the better chelates of, you know, nutri of minerals, <clears throat> they actually take up more space. So they won't be able to fit as much into this little tiny tablet. And what they do is they'll take the cheap ingredients, they'll squish it all together and make this like really tightly packed capsule or, or tablet, but it's so packed together that your body can't digest it because of like what I said before, that, that enzymes are deficient in most people. And so basically you take this thing, which has like a hundred percent of everything and you kind of like poop it out because you poop it out whole because you're not able to break it down. So that's a major, major issue with multis in general. And I say like a really good multi will have you take like six or even eight capsules a day. Yeah. And so, yeah, so going back to what the dosages are, I mean, the thing is, if you have a serious deficiency of something, you're not going to get rid of it just with food and you're not going to get rid of it just by like taking like a little something here and there. I mean, it might help, but I mean, for instance, if I were to give you, if I were to give you a, um, an analogy. If you have got a truck and it gets stuck in the mud, 
you can either kind of like spin your wheels, you know, and maybe possibly dig yourself a deeper hole or just be stuck in there for a while or give yourself a massive push and just get out of that ditch like right away. Um, and that's what I always tell people, you know, it's like, listen, you didn't get here overnight. And so this is going to be a significant amount of nutrients dumped in your system. But, you know, it's a temporary thing because we need to get you out of that ditch. And so, yeah, so the dosages need to be significant. Um, and we're all afraid of that because we're used to the medical model where there's like a clinically effective dose. And then if you go like above that, it's toxic and you could die, right? But with nutrients, I mean, they're native to the body. The body knows what to do with nutrients. The body doesn't know what to do with prescription medications. You know, so basically, I mean, you can take a clinically effective dose of any vitamin, B3, for instance, and you could take 10,000 times that dose and you still won't get toxic effects. Okay, so the window of opportunity when it comes to nutrients is so much broader than it would be with any kind of medication. And do you know how many deaths there were from vitamins? I'm guessing probably zero. Zero. <laughs> right? Do you know how many deaths there were from like medications? Fucking shit tons every day. I mean, I don't have the numbers, but I mean, it's like literally, it's like the number three listing of like deaths. It's something, you know what I mean? It's just like, it's, cr it's crazy. Um, so, so yeah, um, I do take a little more of an aggressive approach when it comes to uh, yeah. giving people nutrients. Yeah, because I know? think too, a lot of people don't realize too, it's like, again, touching on the, uh, you know, when you read the label and it's like, oh, you know, recommended, you know, uh, so one serving is two caps or whatever, recommend to take one serving a day with a meal. It's like, you got to look as part of that is a legality standpoint that they're not going to tell you to take a shitload of it right. for one because they don't want to be held liable if something does happen which most of the stuff it's like you could take the whole bottle and you're just going to piss it out your body's just not going to take it in it's going to take what it needs and it's going to just get get rid of the rest of it and then also it's like it's it is because again i think partially is again the legality standpoint it's like it's a very the base the lowest minimum you can have of those daily percentages or recommended daily amount is the lowest lowest of the form of like here's how much you need to like stay alive almost kind of a thing you know it's the lowest you can get and people oh well you know i take what it's recommended it's like yeah if you were 500 pounds and laid in bed all day maybe that would be good for you because that's all you're really getting but when you're out being active again doing all this stuff is you you need more than that recommended bottom of the barrel amount that they have so you know it's kind of good that i think you know we talk, talked and touched a lot on some of this nutrient stuff and really kind of you know you with your knowledge you kind of really dive into it and really break it down for people to make them really sit and think of oh wow okay you know and it makes sense and they realize that um kind of touching on some of the next stuff that you were talking about with digestion too i know you're kind of really big into getting into these cleanses and you know, liver cleanses and digestive enzymes, stuff like that. Um, kind of what's, what's some more like good info? Cause there's all these fancy woohoo bullshit cleanses and this and that out there that you see and people buy into it. Cause it's just the media and, Oh, Britney Spears is doing this one. It's like, who fuck cares? Like, do you really even know what a world oh, it says it in the magazine? You know, let me just do that. What's kind of the real info and stuff on it. Um, well, you know, all digestion starts in the mouth and then to the stomach. And so, I mean, when you take care of, first of all, like the most basic of all things would be chewing your fucking meals, right? Before you swallow, it's kind of important. Um, <laughs> believe it or not, people don't chew their food. So <laughs> that's where it starts, you know? Um, but a lot of people are deficient in something called hydrochloric acid. Okay, and um, hydrochloric acid is naturally produced by your stomach, and it's meant to be very acidic, 
and it's meant to break down proteins and it breaks down to some degree also the um the cell cellulose walls in your plants like your fibers that you eat and <clears throat> and it also actually it it adds i believe it adds an ion to your minerals so that you can have them pass through your cell membranes so basically if you're not um, if you don't have enough stomach acid in your stomach, you can't absorb minerals. You can't absorb and utilize antioxidants from your, um, from your uh, green veggies. Um, and you will not break down proteins into their constituent amino acids. So you're setting yourself up for um, poor digestion like later on. So HCL is a big one. Um, what else? Let me think about this. That was one other thing I was going to say about that. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. It, um, the acidic nature of your stomach, it needs to be there because uh, you need to be able to sterilize the contents of your food before it moves down. And actually, this is the reason that everybody has like really crappy digestion is because things like stress, things like nutrient deficiencies uh, start to lower the amount of stomach acid that we produce. And so stuff gets into our, you know, our digestive tract that's basically partially digested, um, not sterilized, right? So you might get like stuff like fungus or um, different, uh, you know, um, different bacteria that are not healthy that will get into your digestive tract and start planting themselves there. Um, and then it starts to, to throw off the balance of good bacteria to bad bacteria. So, you know, that kind of stuff creates inflammation in the system. And then, um, and then uh, you know, then you get people that have things like IBS or Crohn's or, you know, these different things that just kind of go down and become like autoimmune diseases later on. So, I mean, this is a big subject matter. Yeah. <laughs> it's really yeah. big. But, um, but that's why, like, for instance, like, for instance, um, I'll start people off with taking a little bit of, um, of HCL uh, to help replace some of that. Not full physiological replacement because I don't want to like go into like negative feedback and get them to stop producing their own, but at least help them to break down their amino acids um, and help them to sterilize their food, help them to absorb their minerals and their B, B vitamins, help them to get more out of the vegetables that they eat. And so that leads to less like bloating, indigestion, um, burping. Um, it leads to basically a happier digestive tract. Um, but then I would say secondary to that would be paying attention to the, to the proper like gut critters that are flowing in like your small and your large intestine. And you have to have a proper balance of good to a good bacteria to bad bacteria. Uh, because those are going to be integral to your gut health in general. They, they take your foods. They basically poop out nutrients that help to feed your digestive tract health so that your digestion or your digestive tract can actually repl replenish itself and um, heal itself. And it also provides you with uh, certain forms of vitamins, um, and it regulates your metabolism. These gut critters actually like help to convert your thyroid hormone into active form. So it speeds up your metabolism to have a good uh, gut microbiome. I mean, it's so, so important. Um, and so I know you're asking about cleanses, but it depends on like what type of cleanse you're talking about. Cause for instance, one that would help with, um, with gut micro uh, microbiota balance is different than one that helps with like uh, liver gallbladder problems and stuff like that. So I'm just kind of, kind of talking about like gut health stuff. Yeah. And um, I think kind of with that, that, that kind of touches on a good point where that's really what a cleanse should be is focusing on those more specific areas where people think of, you know, yeah, you can have basic overall cleanses. Like we've talked about with some of the ones, you know, more of like, or with what I do with a lot of clients is, you know, more of a green smoothie type cleanse, getting rid of caffeine for a week and, you know, getting rid of all these different foods and toxins and stuff. And it kind of helps jumpstart your body, but it's more of a, of an overall basic cleanse. And then you can dive in deeper. But I think a lot of the, you know, fad cleanses that you see in these magazines or, 
on news and celebrities doing this. Oh, you know, I want to do this cleanse because I lost 10 pounds. It's like, that's not the point of fucking cleanse. Like the cleanse is, it's to cleanse your body of all this shit you're putting into it from what's out there. And then you can go in deeper, like you're saying a digestive cleanse or a liver cleanse and gallbladder. That's, that's really what a cleanse is supposed to be there for. Not, oh, I need to drop 10 pounds in a couple days. So I'm going to, whatever crazy shit that someone on the internet said to do. And all these people are losing 10 pounds. Like you don't even know if that's really, it's not even really a cleanse most likely and getting rid of the crap that's in your body. It's just, causing some weird effect to where you are shedding a bunch of water weight and, you know, crapping your brains out or whatever it might be. Like, I think a lot of people miss understand of what a cleanse is really there for and all these different cleanses and what you're supposed to actually do. Shit. Did we get cut off again? <laughs> Still there, Matt? All right. So uh, let's do another recording here. We just had to stop that one to make sure we got it for you guys because the internet dropped again. Uh, going to get that fixed. So all these other interviews aren't going to be messed up that we got lined up for you guys. Going to get a new router tomorrow, so I apologize for that. Um, I don't know if it recorded because I haven't looked at it yet, but uh, I know when it dropped, we were talking about cleanses and the – misunderstanding thanks to the mass media and that people buy into of what a cleanse really should be is that they look at, Oh, you know, so-and-so is doing the, you know, what was that one? It was like the lemon juice and cayenne pepper, whatever that fancy bullshit one was that people like, Oh, you know, I dropped 10 pounds. And so, so it's like, that's not really what a cleanse is there for, as we're saying, you know, whether it's these short four day cleanses, like I start a lot of clients on or the ones you're doing there, to get rid of toxins and then you can get deeper into them like the digestive cleanse or the gallbladder liver cleanse. That's really what a cleanse is about. It's not just let me do some weird crazy shit somebody made up and drop 10 pounds because you really don't know what it's doing inside of you of what a cleanse is there for with those toxins and the acidic level and all this stuff that it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things that have to be in place before you even start a cleanse. Like, you know, like I mentioned the pH levels, right? Like you're not going to be able to detox properly without having a proper pH level. Um, so all toxins are acidic. If your body's already acidic, you're basically putting a bigger acidic load on your system. So you could quite possibly make things a lot worse. All right. Your liver directly connects to your digestive tract. When your liver starts to detox, it dumps a bunch of crap into your digestive tract and you have to get rid of it. If your digestive tract is inflamed, if your digestive tract is imbalanced of like, you know, like improper microflora okay um you're not going to detoxify properly you're going to recirculate those things around your bloodstream and it's going to probably make you sicker and you know a lot of these cleanses are also starvation cleanses so basically you know you basically if you eat nothing you are going to lose weight i mean that's basically what's going to happen so you do lemon pepper and cayenne and i don't know what and these people feel like awesome or whatever they're just getting high <laughs> you know because i mean and it's like if you lose weight like great but where is that weight coming from you know like they're probably losing a lot of lean mass and a lot of the reason behind that is that most of these cleanses don't have enough protein component to them you know so i think there's a lot of confusion out there because people don't really realize the context of what the cleanse it, one cleanse is meant for versus another and so, for instance, if there's like a cancer patient and they're doing like a liquid juicing cleanse, you know, they need that because their digestive system is crap. Like they can't digest proteins. They can't, you know, they, they're, they're acidic as hell. So they need something that's going to give them an alkaline boost and they need the most easy to absorb um, nutrients as possible. And that's where they get the juicing from. But the thing is, if you're an athletic individual and you're trying to maintain muscle mass, I mean, doing one of these cleanses is probably the worst thing you could do because when you try to get rid of toxins, your liver actually needs amino acids. And so if you're not providing those amino acids while you're doing your cleanse, what's going to happen is you're going to catabolize muscle tissue. 
And so you're going to break down muscle tissue. And so all these people that are like healthy and they're doing these cleanses and they're just like lemon and cayenne and like whatever, there's no protein in there. There's no amino acids in there. They're not supporting one of the phases of their liver detoxification. And so what's happening is their body's saying, okay, let's raise cortisol and let's break down a bunch of muscle tissue and then we can detox. Um, and so they might be 10 pounds lighter, but the thing is they're also setting themselves up for like a metabolic crash in the future because now they don't have as much muscle, which is metabolically active. One of their tissues in their body that's metabolically active that helps to drive their metabolism forward. So a lot of times these cleanses can be, can be a lot more damaging than good. Um, and the way that I like to do cleanses is actually I give people – the rule is they cannot starve. So I'll tell them exactly what they need to be eating. I'll give them a bunch more nutrients than they're used to having, and I'll just have them slam it for like a week. And I tell them if they get hungry, what that means is it's a sign that their body is detoxifying and that they need more nutrients. A cleanse is not the time to focus on weight loss. The cleanse is time to focus on – getting rid of all these toxic burdens that are keeping your metabolism from moving uh, forward, from being, you know, maintaining at a high level. And once you get rid of those things, now you can start to support yourself and lose weight, gain muscle mass a lot more efficiently because um, these toxins aren't inhibiting your mitochondrial function, right? So everything just works better. And that's the idea behind the cleanse. But like I said, before you do a cleanse, you have to make sure that your gut health is good because if you're trying to cleanse your liver, like I said, it's got to go through your digestive tract in order to become waste. And if your gut health isn't good, then you're not going to be able to excrete these toxins and you may make yourself a lot sicker. So there's, there's kind of a step, a step process you need to go through before you get somebody to the point where they're actually ready to cleanse, you know, like bringing, like I said, magnesium, vitamin D, and zinc levels up. You bring those up, you clear out the gut, and you say, okay, now we're ready to cleanse the liver. You know, so it's, it's a process. It's not as simple as everybody thinks, and, you know, detox in a box, I don't know about all that crap. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've seen plenty of those out there. Not to say that people haven't had success with those, because, you know, you can keep them very basic and still – you know, cleanse your body from a lot of the natural stuff. But when you really want to dive into these cleanses, they're like saying there's a lot more that goes into it than what people will actually realize. And so it's good to hear and know about a lot of this with everything we've been talking to really kind of dive in. And it, it gets a little bit more into everything than just the basics that you hear that's out there or a cleanse or take a multivitamin. It's like, okay, well, why? And what's better? Like, what do I need to, how much should I be taking? Or is this actually good for me of what I'm reading that the news media and everybody's saying, Oh, this is so great. You should do it. So-and-so got X results from it. So it's really good to kind of let people know about that, whether you're male, female, you're trying to put on weight or lose weight. It, it really, I think it speaks to everybody with that. Um, I know earlier we were talking about kind of want to jump onto another subject here is how um, some of the stuff you're doing that's very different with all these different things and approaches that you do going in towards whether it's guys wanting to do natural bodybuilding or even these bikini competitors, the girl you were explaining to me earlier that was totally different and she actually kicked everyone else's ass and won where these people were miserable, not eating, doing this, doing that. She was eating more and more and more all the way up to it. Um, you know, I kind of want to dive into that a little bit more because, you know, that's, it's a growing thing. It seems like more and more people want to get into just physique or natural bodybuilding, or they might not, but they still want to look that way too. Yeah, of course. You know. Um yeah, I think I think a lot of girls that get into bikini, like they get into it because they just they see an opportunity to kind of like, you know, focus on their on their nutrition and have a reason and a motivational point to like, you know, look forward to and and so then they just get on it, you know, and and they do it in whatever way they think is going to be best, which is usually when it comes to a woman, she goes, you know, I'm going to lift a little bit of 
pink weights here and there because I don't want to get too bulky, you know. And they choose bikini because, like, yeah, I just I don't I don't really want to be bulked out. I don't want to look like one of those bulky people. And um, and then they'll just jump on the cardio machine. But I just think like the more cardio, the better. And so, you know, I mean, a typical contest prep, 16 to 20 weeks, you know, it's a long time. And then you starve yourself from the beginning and then you jump on cardio equipment for like two hours plus every day, like from the get go, you're setting yourself up for massive failure. Um, and I see that all the time. And, you know, not to say that there's not a place for proper cardiovascular work, because, you know, it is important, I think. Um, but when you're trying to sculpt a physique, the thing that's going to make the biggest impact is going to be weight training and proper weight training, <clears throat> you know. And to be honest, like, most of these bikini girls need to put on muscle more than they need to lose fat. So, you know, the thing that's going to get them there is to, to eat more food than they're normally used to eating. So... I actually will feed them and then I'll have them work out. And basically my rule is if you want to do cardio, you can only do as much cardio as your weight training. So the thing is like these girls are going to be like stuck on doing cardio. Like, Oh, but what about the cardio? I need to do the cardio, you know? And so I'll say, okay, weight train and you can do cardio, <laughs> you know, but then I'll feed them more because of it, you know? And so the idea is maybe week 16 all the way up to the competition, we're going week 16, they're weight training four or five days a week. They're doing maybe three days of cardio, right? And then as we go on, I'm going to add another day of training or I'm going to add more reps or I'm going to increase the time of retention per set. I'm going to add more food, right? And so what that does is it actually establishes like if their energy output's here and their food intake is here, right? They're still in a deficit. So they're going to lose body fat, right? But if their energy output is here, and then I can raise their food to here, they're still in a deficit, but now they're going to be more anabolic. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So I play with this all the time where I'm like playing with their energy intake, right? And what that does is it keeps their metabolism from crashing. Um, but they're never starving and they gain muscle. Yeah, it keeps them from from hitting a, a plateau too, which, you know, for the other website that I have, that's all for women. You know, I was talking with uh, somebody who was specifically talking about nutrition and eating the other day. Um, and it was kind of talking about that of manipulating so you don't hit those plateaus of, you know, being able to drop certain things of 50 calories here and there and then raising it back up and, you know, more energy. Basically kind of the same thing you're saying, but it's, it's not just for for weight loss either. It's also for those that want to put on weight, but do it a better way to where you're still, you're not starving yourself. You're not fucking miserable, you know, doing that. You hear all the time, oh, it's so hard, but you know, it's so well worth it. Like, yeah, there are some hard times when you're trying to cut and get really, you know, cut out a lot of water weight. This and that, like there are times, but I think a lot of people are stuck like you and I were talking earlier and kind of the old ways where you're kind of turning it around. And I know there's other people out there like, um, you know, John Meadows, who I was telling you, I'm trying to get on here too. You know, he made a post yeah. the other day on Facebook about uh, guys that are like, Oh, you know, I'm trying to bulk up. And you know, he's like, there's, it kind of defeats the purpose. And it's an old thinking where he's turning it around now. is like, you could bulk, but you could still stay. You should be staying between a 10 and 15% body fat and still gaining size. You don't need to be this big, fat, bloated person, whether you're a guy or a girl, up to a competition where a lot of people think that of like, you know, I'm going to get big and then I'm going to cut down. And, you know, these guys are gaining that don't know. You're saying you have these girls and guys that you've told me about that are putting on size, still cutting body fat, all the way up to the competition and still eating where guys usually look, Oh, you know, they're, you see some of these guys out there, you know, they're like, Oh yeah, I'm bulked up and you know, I'm eating more, but I'm training, but they're still kind of doing it wrong. And it's like, yeah, I put on all this size where two thirds of that usually is fucking fat, you know, like, yeah, great. You put on some size, but a third of it is actually really muscle and you put on more fat than you did muscle where it should be the other way around. You're going to put on some fat when you are, eating more, eat big to get big that everybody says. 
but a lot of people miss it. Oh, I'm just going to eat whatever, a bunch of crap and this and that. And you're putting on a lot more fat. Like right now I'm trying to put on a lot more size this year, stuff that I've lost and things, but I'm still trying to watch what I eat and not, if I start to see little areas of like, oh, I'm getting a little bit more fat here than I need to, like I'm putting on size, but I'm kind of getting a little fatter than I want. I'll kind of dial things back to where it's, I'm still putting on that size, but I don't want to get big, fat, and bloated at the same time because it kind of defeats the purpose. I don't feel good. You're slow. You're, it, it's just not great unless you see some of these guys that, you know, in another realm where you talk to a lot of these, these pro powerlifters, like, I just need to get big. They eat whatever the hell they want, and they're jacked. You know, they're big, yeah. well, jacked, but they're big and strong dudes. But that's in a different area of what we're talking about now with people that want to be jacked, you know, lean, mean, whether they want to compete or mm-hmm. just look fucking badass when it comes to beach season here pretty soon. Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, with yeah, with power lifters, it's a different thing because the fatter they are, the less distance the bar has to travel, so... <laughs> <laughs> so there, so there is an advantage to having a gut when you're trying to do the big bench press, you know? Um, but, uh, but yeah, actually when you get fatter, when you're trying to like gain muscle and be anabolic, it actually does a lot of things that are detrimental, um, because fat, uh, actually pushes out five different markers of inflammation. Okay. So you're going to be more inflamed the fatter you are. Um, your fat cells are actually an endocrine horm- or endocrine organ that produces uh, an enzyme called aromatase, and that can actually convert your testosterone to estrogen. So you're more estrogenic when you're fatter. So that means your androgens don't even go where they're supposed to, which is to help you be more anabolic and build muscle. So you know, as people get leaner, they actually get more efficient at shuttling nutrients into their muscle tissue, and that's what you need in order to become anabolic. And so the first step to getting big is actually to get shredded first and then to maintain your shreddedness while you build. And I'm not saying that you should stay 6%, you know, cause that's not really realistic, but I mean, at least like you said, I mean, 10, 12, I mean, below 15 for sure, you know? And, um, you know, so, I mean, I do believe in like lean bulks, I guess, you know, cause you are going to eat, enough you're going to gain a little bit of body fat probably to get some quality muscle gains but uh, and fucking mcdonald's and shit like whatever you can do to get calories like you know because you're doing so much damage to your system while you're like building up and like you said if you gain like five pounds of muscle and like 25 pounds of fat what are the chances you're going to maintain those five pounds while you cut off those 25 pounds of fat you know what are the chances you know because you're probably going to eat in a non-optimal fashion to like cut down and you're going to be probably doing it in a rush to get ready for contest. And then, you know, you probably end up with minimal gains, if any, after the fact of like building up and then cutting, cutting back down. So, so yeah, I think you can do them both at the same time. If you, if you, uh, especially I think in bikini, because they're not, they're not supposed to be like super shredded, you know, on stage. Um, so they just have to be shapely. Yeah. So. And when it's body fat, you know, it's totally different than men in that realm. As we all know, you know, they typically have more, but like you're saying in the bikini, it's totally different than a chick doing a bodybuilding or figure that are super lean and jack that are just doing more of the bikini. It's different. Um, another thing that kind of popped into my head when you're saying that if, you know, when we're talking about being in the 10 to 15% body fat range, a lot of guys say, well, how do I stay in that if I'm trying to bulk? Well, if you're doing it correctly, they're like, oh, you know, I'm going to gain body fat. Yeah, but if you're gaining more muscle mass, that's going to counterbalance the body fat and your overall weight and lean mass to fat mass ratio. So yeah, as you're gaining body fat, your still lean mass is going up, so you're still in that 10 to 15% range. You don't need to just fucking shoot them both way up there. You can still stay within those ranges cor- correctly. Like if you start to be like, I can't see my abs, you're kind of starting to get out of that range and get a little bit of a fatty in you. You know, like that's kind of the way I look at it. It's like, okay, how's my, you know, I gained fat here first 
And in my sides, it's sometimes I'm like, oh, what the hell is that? But then I'm like, okay, you know, I can still see my abs. Okay, they're there. Okay, don't let myself get in my own way. It's still working. I'm still gaining size. But as soon as it's like, oh, my abs are starting to go away, okay, I need to change some things there. So I think that's a good way to also gauge and look at it for guys and girls just looking at your leanness of, okay, if you're eating more and you're putting on size, pay attention to you're going to gain a little bit of the body fat, but have those small indicators to where you're like, okay, well, if I know I'm in this range, I should be able to see this, this, and this. For me, like I was saying, I know if I can still see my abs, I know typically around where I'm at, depending on how well they're, I can see them because I've tested it for so long. And I just know some of these other areas are where I'm going to gain a little bit of fat. But as soon as I cut that down, they're the same first places that they come away from. So to not get too involved in getting your head around it and getting in your own way. Yeah, it's funny what you just said about the, um, you know, the lean mass, the fat, la fat mass ratio, because I mean, I mean, that's so true, because it's almost like a way you can like cheat the system in a sense, you know, people are like, uh, <clears throat> like if I, I mean, let's see, pick up something easy, like if someone's 200 pounds, right, and they have um, 190 pounds of lean mass, that's 5%, that's 5% body fat, right? I mean, so that's a pretty lean person. But if you didn't to affect their body fat, but you had them gain like five pounds of lean mass, they'd now be two, what was it? It would be two, two and a half percent body fat. You know what I mean? So you're changing their body fat without even having to change their body fat. So they didn't necessarily lose, you know, just because they gained some lean mass. And so if I can focus on that, just gaining lean mass, you actually could get leaner, quote unquote. You know, you might have the same number of fat cells, but the thing is your lean mass is higher, so the ratio changes. Um, and so it shouldn't really be that hard to like maintain that ratio while you build up because the more lean mass you have, the less percentage wise there's going to be of body fat in your body. Um, so yeah, you might gain some, um, but, but if you're making sure the nutrients are going where they're supposed to, then yeah, you'll end up, you'll end up kind of gaining what you're supposed to maintaining your anabolism and your insulin sensitivity and rock and rolling yeah and i think a good part with that too is you can stay more in the bulking phase for lack of a better term really but the bulking that we're talking about i think when you don't put on that massive amount of fat gain it's you can stay in that phase longer and then towards the end you can cut down that and then get drop that extra body fat for a competition or whatever the beach day you're looking forward to it's a you don't need as much time leading up to that because you haven't gained so much on it you've been putting on this but so you're still in that small percentage where it's like okay i need to drop five percent not 15 percent body fat or 10 percent. it's you, you, there's a lot less so you can actually for speaking in these competition terms where some of these other people they can't stay in that bulking phase as long where you can, so you kind of have that more advantage, I think, over them because you can technically, you should be able to put on more size than they would because you can cut down faster because you haven't put on as much body fat. Right, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, uh, John Mullins is huge on, on that whole front, man. And uh, he's actually been giving me a whole lot of really good ideas, so I can't wait to have you you know, talk to him about some of this stuff. It'll be really interesting to hear what that interview looks like. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. He's always got this stuff. I'll be listening in for that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely, I'll let, I'll let you know. I shot him an email and stuff today. So hopefully, I'll, uh, I'll get that lined up pretty soon. There we are. Oh, hey. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, no, I was saying I'll let you know as soon as I kind of get that, that one up. Hopefully, you know, the biggest thing is fixing this internet issue tomorrow, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. I got him and a bunch of other people kind of signed up. So for everyone watching this, it's kind of a sneak peek. I'll let you guys know as things go. And I'll ask you and everybody else Q&As for who are all these, you know, special guest speakers for everyone to have some Q&A for them. 
So I'll let you know because I'm sure you got some good questions that you want to ask him as well for that. Um, man, I think, you know, we've been going for a while. I don't want to kill everybody on these. We got a lot of information, I think. So people are going to have to go back through, check it out, um, listen to the audios, things like that. Uh, if people want to, I know you're working on a lot of your new site, branding, and things like that. If people want to get a hold of you, what's kind of the, the best way for them right now? Um, well, actually, right now I'm putting together like a new website. And when it's up, it's going to be restorafit.com. So that's R-E-S-T-O-R-A fit.com. Um, so that one, that's up. That's going to be great. I'm also at restorafit at gmail.com. So anybody can like go ahead and just email me there. Um, and then of course the same on Twitter, Instagram, restorafit, everything, uh, and Facebook. So there it is. It's pretty simple. Right. Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff will be up pretty soon. And then, uh, and then, yeah, but my email's up. So. Okay. Perfect. So yeah. If people want to get a hold of you right now, email is going to be the best way. And then, Start following you. I'm sure even now that the sites aren't up, I'm sure you're still posting things like that on Facebook, mm -hmm. on Twitter, the Facebook stuff like that, so they can check out. But if people want to get a hold of you, boom, you got it. The email right, right. there, and then stay tuned for all the other stuff. Um, I'm excited for this. It was awesome. We could, went over even with the glitches. We still got it to work and went over a lot of good info. So I think it's going to hit for everybody. You know, guys, girls, everybody that's kind of more into this side with the body synergy training stuff, more the hardcore type training and nutrition, things like that. So, uh, you know, thanks for taking the time, dude. Hey, thanks, Matt. It's been good to see you again. All right. Well, uh, everybody stay tuned. I'll let you guys know what other, uh, recordings and special guests we have and, uh, hit up Joey. I know he can help you guys out. If you got certain specific things with your movement or you kind of want to get some more info, He's there for you, and I know he'd be more than happy to help you guys out. So uh, thanks, for everybody, for checking this out, and I hope you guys got a lot from it, and I'll look forward to it soon. And uh, thanks again, Joey. Thanks, man.